Men's clothing for Shaw TV provided by today's Mark's Work Warehouse. Your work week forecast from Environment Canada ahead in the next 15 minutes. But first, road repairs aren't the only detours we'll have to contend with over the next few months. Users of the city pathway between the Louise Crossing on 10th Street Northwest and the Baines Bridge at the Calgary Zoo are being asked to contend with repairs beginning today. The work on the pathway is going to be done in four stages, beginning at the west end of the stretch from the Louise Crossing to the Princess Island Bridge at 3rd Street. Now, there will be detours directing you users to the path on the south side of the bow via one of the four bridges crossing the river. Work is slated for completion on November 28th, but dates for the different stages may vary due to weather. For more information, you can reach the Pathway Hotline at Calgary Parks and Rec by calling 268-2300. In keeping with the growing energy sector here in Calgary, the Southern Alberta Institute of Technology is offering a new program targeted at the ever-changing oil and gas industry. Mike Davies has been working as a geological technologist for the past four years, but he's left the workforce to go back to school full-time to take part in the new exploration technology program at SAIT. I hope to get a, a greater, greater understanding of geophysics, um, definitely some, some really good useful computer skills. Uh, we're going to be taking some basic programming, um, C language. Uh, we're going to learn all about Unix computers and boxes. Um, so it's going to be really good. Uh, we should have some pretty, some pretty good employability by the time we're finished. The new program is designed for the 21st century explorer, equipping learners with the skills for a career in the petroleum and energy sector. Eventually, graduates will be able to use state-of-the-art technology like this 3D seismic equipment that's becoming the tool of choice for the energy sector. Well, the program is not a traditional earth science program. It's a combination of information technologies and earth sciences, and it's essentially designed to provide industry with the latest and greatest digital uh, explorationist. In other words, uh, we do not cater to the traditional earth science market, but rather a career that uh, combines elements of, of both infotech and energy. And even if and when the energy sector takes a downturn, graduates will still be able to use their newfound knowledge for other purposes. As you know, historically, the energy business has been a pretty volatile one, and the job market tends to swing. What we offer here are the sort of skills that can be applied in other industries. And with the energy business ever-changing, Mike says he's confident the course will provide the up-to-date training he needs. It's very up to speed with what the industry demands, and um, the skills we learn, will, it'll be very easy to upgrade in the future as required. Currently, there are 30 students enrolled during this, the inaugural year for the Exploration Technology Program. But because the Calgary energy sector places such a high demand on graduates with this type of knowledge base, SAIT is hoping to double its full-time program capacity and perhaps even add a part-time program within the next three years. Lisa Holliston, Shaw TV City. The Cable Movie Minute, brought to you by Shaw. Emily Watson received a British Academy Award nomination for her work in the drama Angela's Ashes. Now see the film playing this week on Viewer's Choice Pay-Per-View. Is that right, McCourt? Teaster. Don't speak, you! Can't you see that God is on your tongue? Don't miss Angela's Ashes playing this week on Viewer's Choice Pay-Per-View. Based on the best-selling autobiography by Frank McCourt, the film accounts a family's attempt to escape poverty in the slums of pre-war Limerick. A very successful book, director Alan Parker says he's confident people will approve of his adaptation. With regards to this, maybe I've learned over the years. I've been, I'm very faithful to this book. I don't think anyone's going to be uh, at all surprised by uh, who, if you love the book, I hope you love the film. For Emily Watson, playing the complex lead character was different from her previous work. As she says, she found it an emotionally restrained role. When I first approached it, I thought, gosh, this is going to be a very emotional role. And it is a very emotional role, but it's, there's no fireworks in there. There's no kind of craziness. A two-time Oscar nominee, Watson says she was humbled each time her work received that level of praise. It's like a very difficult question to answer, really. It just make, kind of makes you want to sort of feel all squirmy and modest and say, well, I don't know. Um. You've got to get up close like this, but bing you blow their brains all over your nice cyber league suit. 
For another great adaptation of a novel, check out Mario Puzo's The Godfather when it plays on A Channel this Wednesday. The classic drama looks at the lurid world of the Mafia with a powerful Oscar-winning performance from Marlon Brando. Someday, and that day may never come, I'll call upon you to do a service for me. But uh, until that day, accept this justice as a gift on my daughter's wedding day. Although the part was given to Al Pacino, among the actors considered for Michael Corleone were Jack Nicholson and Dustin Hoffman. For Shaw TV, I'm Julie Sinclair, and this has been a Cable Movie Minute. Country music fans wanting to take in the annual Canadian Country Music Awards just might be piling into the pickup for a drive to Edmonton. This year, the awards will be in our provincial capital, complete with performances from artists like Julian Austin and Tara Lynn Hart. First time you kissed me on that summer day, the way you looked at me took my breath away. The awards will be hosted by Calgary's Paul Brandt and another Albertan singer, Terry Clark. Oh, Awards go September 11th at the Sky Reach Center in Edmonton, and you can reserve tickets by calling 777-0000. Well, this weekend, some Calgarians will be heading out for a bike rally, and as we hear in this report from Susan Diedrich, this is a rally that'll have you seeing double, literally. A leisurely bike ride is something many of us enjoy, but these bikes are a little different. They have twice the pedal power. Especially on, on flats and downhills, you can... People of equal, equal abilities, you can typically outpace a single bike. Peter Quietini and Nadine Johnson met on an outing with a tandem bike club for the visually impaired. I wouldn't be riding a single bike by myself, so it's, it's really the way that I can get out and bike ride. And as the famous song, Bicycle Built for Two, goes, they'll soon be pedaling down the road of life. I'm half crazy, all for the love. And now we're planning our wedding for February, so uh, certainly it was a, a great outing and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Nadine and Peter will be among riders taking part in a tandem bike rally being held this weekend. And it's basically just an opportunity for all tandem couples to get together and, and have a ride. Asunta and Perry Oswheeler have been riding together for several years, and this is the third year they've organized the bike rally. And we started to notice people, other people on tandems as well, and we thought, gee, there's got to be a lot more tandems in the city, and wouldn't it be fun to get to know them? Because every time we ran into somebody on a bike path or something, they all seemed so friendly, you know? And so we realized that tandems were very social, and we thought it would be great to get involved in a, a bunch of tandems together, just to get to know people. The bicycles built for two are sometimes built for even more than that, a feature that Dad Dave Kelly enjoys. We stay together. Uh, we can get out and do things as a family. Um, we'll go for a ride around the reservoir and stop at parks along the way and play and have picnics and things like that. And uh, you know, it's, it's kind of fun. As for Peter and Nadine, they say despite their obvious connection to the song, they don't plan to play it at the wedding. You look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle built for two. The rally is being held on Sunday, September 10th at Simons Valley Ranch. For more information, call 277-0199. For Shaw TV Lifestyles, I'm Susan Diedrich.